What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today we're going to be reviewing the Razer Wolverine Ultimate, which is ultimately the competitor to something like the Xbox One Elite Controller. They're both around the same price. The Wolverine Ultimate has swappable thumbsticks, a D-pad, RGB lights, tons of remappable buttons and paddles. Pretty good bonuses, but one drawback that might be a bummer for most people, but we'll check it out in this review. So starting off, the Wolverine is actually meant for the Xbox One, but could also be used with your PC if you want to use it with some games on that. But taking a look inside the box, kind of like the Xbox One Elite Controller, they do include it inside a carrying case with the additional swappable thumbsticks and the additional D-pad. But it's nice to include that for you so you can keep everything nice and tidy, and in case you're bringing this with you on the go, it'll always be protected. And at first glance, it's looking pretty sleek. I think the whole Wolverine name definitely fits it. The controller itself is made of a matte plastic, but we do have some rubber rubberized grips along the paddles in the back. Nice little embossed Razer logo underneath the Xbox One logo, but it looks like what you'd expect. And just at first glance, comparing it to the Xbox One, it is 10 times lighter, I do gotta say that. Obviously laid out around the same, but just the biggest difference beside the weight is the Xbox One controller has more of a rubberized texture to it, opposed to the Wolverine's plastic finish. We do have a row of four buttons on the bottom that we'll talk about in a minute. But as for the remappable buttons on the back side, we actually have two additional controls that the Xbox One Elite controller does not have. So let's check this all out. So first things first, I mentioned it in the beginning, but we do have two additional thumbsticks. You get a taller concave thumbstick and a convex thumbstick. They're magnetized, you can just swap them out and they fit right into place. As for the additional D-pad, it's pretty much more the same. One has four individual arrows, the other one is that cross D-pad that we're used to. For me, I'm a big fan of the individual arrow one, that one just feels better to me. But let's flip it over and take a look at the back because this is where it gets interesting. Up top, you obviously have your left and right triggers and bumpers, but you also have these additional triggers here, M1 and M2. They can be remapped to pretty much whatever button you want. Underneath that is the trigger stops, which pretty much makes the trigger stop past a certain point so you can press them down quicker. And M3, M4, M5, and M6 are like the paddles in the back of, you know, scuff controllers or the Xbox One Elite controller. But the way these are used are interesting. So to get everything set up and remapped to the way you like, you have to download the Razer Synapse app on the Xbox One. And instead of remapping those back paddles, like I said, M5 and M6 is something like, you know, A and B or X and Y or whatever. M5 is a focus control and M6 is an agility control. And what this does pretty much is think of it like a mouse, you know, like a gaming mouse with a DPI switcher. With the focus, when you actuate that and use the thumbsticks, it like lowers your DPI. Like I said, think of it that way, where the thumbstick now is much uh, more precise and it doesn't move as fast. As where if you press M6, which is the agility control, that makes your thumbstick go quicker and faster, like you're increasing your DPI. It's very cool and it's definitely different. I like how they have that. It could be great for, you know, like aiming and if you're doing like a sniper or something like that on a game, really can help you get precise shots. If you want to remap or switch up your profiles, that's where those bottom buttons come in on the front of the controller. So the first button on the left is going to pretty much have you manually remap the button if you're not inside the software. Next to that is going to help you pretty much cycle between the two profiles that you can make inside the app. Then obviously you have your mic mute button and your audio control because on the bottom of that is your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for plugging in like a headset or a pair of headphones. Usually you need to buy a separate adapter to control your audio and the mic and stuff like that from Xbox, but it's nice they pretty much have this just included on the bottom for you. Next thing before we move on, which is actually pretty different, it took me a while to get used to, was the buttons on here. They feel kind of different. And I alluded to it earlier about it whole being like compared to a gaming mouse with the DPI button, but the A, B, X, and Y buttons actually feel like I'm pressing down on a mouse. And that obviously Razer is known and very popular for making their gaming mice, but that's what it feels like. It feels like you're clicking on a mouse. Check this out. So it doesn't feel like on a normal controller when you're pressing the button all the way down. Here you actually feel like you're actuating a switch like in a mouse. Thought that was pretty cool. Then obviously one of the big selling points that's gonna add some extra flair to this thing is gonna be the little RGB light strip. It's minimal, but it's Razer. You know it had to be there. And again, you're gonna need the Synapse app on the Xbox to go in and configure this, but you have a few different lighting modes. You have your breathing, which you can you know pick colors to breathe in and out. Immersive is gonna kind of like react to things going on in the game. I don't have any games that are compatible with that yet, but again, this app is still very, very new and it's growing. Reactive is gonna pulse a color whenever you press a button on the controller. Spectrum cycling is gonna go through all the colors. Static's just gonna have it be one color. 
And then wave is your 16.8 million RGB light wave. It's gonna go through all the colors in a wave-like fashion. Again, the strip there is very subtle, but it does add a little extra flair to it. RGB for days. So to bring this all together, the Wolverine Ultimate Controller is definitely pretty solid for the price point of around $150. I mentioned it earlier, but this is intended for Xbox One. You can also use it on PC. Um, oddly enough, they are still working on the app inside the PC for a Synapse to work with this. Um, but the things I really like about it is overall its design. I feel it's much more ergonomic to hold in the hand versus the Xbox One Elite controller, which is a little bit more round. And this is much, much more lightweight, which is always good if you're going to be using this for a long period of time. And you get those two additional paddles in control to the focus and the agility shifters, which is really, really cool. So instead of, you know, having just the four on the Xbox One Elite controller, you have the four here, plus the two additional up top and of course, RGB light strip. But where the one big con comes into play that might be a deal breaker for some people, I'm not sure yet, and I'm kind of torn how I feel about it, is when I unplug it, as you guys see, the light goes out because this is not powered by a battery, which means you cannot use this wirelessly. So whether you're using this on Xbox One or your PC, you have to have it plugged in at all times. Now, what I do kind of like is if that's not a big deal to you, uh, the cable that they include for you is very, very long and braided, and it also has a breakaway cable, kind of like we saw on the original Xbox controllers. So they do what they can to improve that wired experience, and their main claim here is because they want it to be, you know, zero latency, zero lag, and obviously a wired connection is going to be more reliable versus wireless. It's just a bummer because I love everything about this, and just be able to kick back on my couch, you know, and use this wired would have been great. It's not a big deal to me though, because my uh, my Xbox and my TV is not too far away from me as it is, so I can use this. It's just the added annoyance of having a cable, uh, but I guess you don't have to worry about the battery life. So in the end, I really like the controller. I actually do, like I said, prefer it in ergonomics um, over the Xbox One Elite controller. It's just a bummer that it's not wireless, and I do kind of prefer the, uh, the rubberized feel versus the plastic feel, but all around for the price point, it is awesome. If you want to pick it up, I highly recommend it. Just because the extra paddles and shifters itself, I think makes it worth it. And if you're an RGB lover, the little strip's going to appeal to you, I'm sure. So like I said, check the description down below. I'll have the Wolverine Ultimate Controller listed there for you, if you don't mind the non-wireless capabilities. If you liked your review, give it a thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day.